Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast? No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. to Road to Indie TV Live. I am your new host, Parker Thompson, for 2021, and I couldn't be more excited to be trackside here at Barber Motorsports Park for the first rounds of the Road to Indie Championships. I'm here with one of the most colorful personalities on the Road to Indie and a fan favorite everywhere we go, Colin Kaminsky. Colin, how are you? Hey, how are you, Parker? I'm fantastic. I'm amped up. I'm a rookie. We got <laughs> lots of rookies in the field, rookie. and I'm a rookie commentator. Uh -huh. This should be a lot of fun this year, but... Uh, yeah. What's going on at Barber Motorsports Park? What are your What are your feelings going in? I know you got a race coming up at like uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, we stole it's you away be, for a little bit. It's gonna be quick, but you know, it's just like Hollywood. We can change so quickly. It's we're in the car before you blink. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I actually have a question for you though. Okay. What's it like being a rookie again? When's the last time that's happened? On the Listen, road? I got goosebumps. <laughs> and not only do I got goosebumps, I've never been more nervous before the start of a race, and uh -huh. I'm in mine right now. Right. So uh, no. Really cool. I couldn't be more excited to take on this role. It's quite fun. As you know, I've, I've been. Dabbled. Uh, I've dabbled. I know, right? You have dabbled. I've so for dabbled. those of you at home that don't know, Colin was actually the 2019 paddock walk segment. Yeah, there was some shoes to fill. I stepped up. We probably hit a triple, not a home run. We were close, and uh, and then I passed the roll off. I gave the torch back. See, he, he came in like a veteran. He did so good that he's like, I got to retire while I'm at the top. Yeah. And once he retired at the top, now he's back to race car exactly. driving. Exactly. Yeah. He just, you know. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day I can aspire to be as good as Colin Kaminsky behind the mic. But yeah. if I don't, I got race car driving to fall back to. Yeah. Colin, your thoughts on this weekend? I know you're starting just outside the top ten coming up here for race one. Yes. It's been a, a challenging race weekend for you. Yes. Obviously, uh, I think it goes without saying you've had a little bit of uh, mechanical issues. I know you're better than top ten. I know you're at the front when they give it's you nice the car. It's nice of you. No, no problem. <laughs> so what's your thoughts going into race? Are you thinking points? What are you thinking? Points, yeah. I mean, number one is we're going to try and finish every lap. I mean, you can't win a championship or a race if you don't finish every lap. And I found myself in spats over time where you don't finish races, and that's worse than, than finishing 13th. So if, uh, you know, Barber is infamously hard to pass, and if we can't go forward, then, uh, you know, we're just going to finish the race. But Ideally, we're going to, you know, we set the car up, hopefully a little bit to, to work better behind some cars. And Indy cars out there right now laying down rubber. Um, that maybe can help some racing lines, and we're just going to try and go forward. That's perfect. Thinking positive here. Tony's Kazmitz is your engineer, correct? He is, yes, unfortunately. Now, he is from Estonia. Yeah. 
speaks good English, yes, but he he's does. very straight to the point. Absolutely. You've worked with Tony's for the last two seasons. Yeah. How do you feel your relationship is right now? Oh, dude, it's awesome. Me and him, we just vibe. You know what I mean? For all you viewers at home, it's just it's just good vibes. We uh, no, we we've, we're on the same wavelength all the time. You know, we're we always have the same goals in mind, and uh, that correlates usually on the track. It's you know, if you're if you're right there with your engineer, it gives good good results. Good That's things. perfect. Yeah. Now you've been with the same teammate for the last two seasons, going three. into your three. Well, two seasons. full. This is our third. This is your third. Yeah. It's the uh, infamous peanut butter and jelly relationship, Hunter yeah. McElroy. Yeah. What is it like working with Hunter on and off the track? It's, it's pretty fun. It's interesting. I'll say that we uh, we get along way too well, um, and we've had we have our fun off the track, um, and on the track we just push each other. Um, you know, every weekend we go to, he's he's on it, and. Uh, we just we get good data, we get good stuff to look at, and yeah, I think we I think we push each other pretty well. So I'll I'll be fun. honest. When you say you push each other pretty well, I raced against you both in uh, 2020, and mm -hmm. I do remember at the end of the season, Colin Kaminsky was coming out on the the pointy end of it. Yeah, it's getting the elbows out. You, know? you were getting so. the elbows out. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been no, it's fun. I think just overarching, we're talking about a good relationship here that's been lasting with the Paps crew. Looking at the camera, the point there it is. Um, and yeah, it's it's been fun being with the same guys, and it's it, when you get to gel together like that, it's, uh, it's oh, good. it's like a family over it is. there. It I is. mean, I do watch you guys. It is pretty cool is. to see Augie, Pops, and the whole crew gel yep. like you do. I watched the kid standing across from me even win his first race today, and it's uh, you can't be happier for your teammates and stuff. It's just you know, it's like a family. You just you feel that connection, so it's cool. Well, and it's cool. We're gonna get to talk to Yuvin. He's uh, he's on standby as our I next wanna, interview. Yeah. It was emotional today when I watched Yuvin. The uh, victory you know, circles right Tony's across right from there. our live. We got lots of people coming in to watch this interview, so it's a cool atmosphere for Road Dindy TV Live here for 2021. Yeah. Colin, you're going into uh, the 2021 championship. Now, I'm not sure if it's 100% public, but I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I know you're on a three-race deal, essentially, with Paps Racing. You're yeah. still hunting down sponsorship. Yeah. You've got a lot of leads. You're one of the hardest workers in the paddock. What do you What do you need from the good people on the Road Dindy TV? Money, you know, if you guys are rich out there, just, you know, come open your wallet. Um, no, just, uh, yeah, we're, we're on a three weekend deal so far, um, just to see where we see where we start and um, we'll go from there. But uh, the funds, you know, they're coming up a little bit short this year. I've had immense family uh, help for the last couple of years that I couldn't be more thankful for, but uh, it's, it's hard to be a race car driver in this world. You have to go make businesses, uh, you know, more known you have to see if you can connect them to other partners and you gotta you gotta help them and they'll help you so we're uh we're gonna go hunt down a little bit of sponsorship and we'll we're gonna be trying to back on the road dindy well and on that subject you yeah. are in school of business I at am. pittsburgh university did I've i get that right two weeks university of pittsburgh yeah. sorry this is the canadian speaking yeah. here <laughs> yeah um yeah i got two weeks left actually i've got two weeks and i graduate on may 3rd congratulations um, yeah i'll be graduating with a marketing degree provided i don't fail my finals and we'll be we'll be good. The finals are in St. Pete, right? They are. They're in the middle of race week and all that fun stuff. But uh, we'll figure it out. Well, to wrap it up, if there's any sponsors out there, any companies that need one of the best representatives from uh, Illinois, I think it goes without saying that you deserve it. You thank deserve you. to be on the road to IndyCar. It feels like it. it feels like it. No, it does. <laughs> but thank you. So lastly, before we wrap it up, you're about to go jump in the car. What's yeah. your mindset? Are you a guy? Do you pound music? Do you get no. focused? Do you juggle? What do you do? I don't do anything, honestly. I probably crack a joke with Tony. He's still watching. Um, and then I just kind of hop in the car. Sometimes I'll throw on Mac Miller. Uh, Nike's on my feet. That's a great song. Um, just kind of gets you in the zone. But uh, it's very rare that I go to music as, like, always. Maybe it's just I don't have a routine, it just, which is weird. I've played hockey. I'm a goalie. I've played baseball. You I think I'm superstitious, but I'm not. Well, I will put on different gloves, shoes, and get in the car backwards. I don't care. It's just wow. Because once, okay. once I'm in, I'm going to zone in, and that's the best I can do. Even left side, right side of the car doesn't, doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Buckle up. When I'm in and I'm buckled, I'm just going to give it my all, and that's all I can do. So everything before is doesn't matter. All right, folks, you heard it here first. Colin is going to go put his suit on. No routine. He's just going to jump in, Let's go do the business. See what happens. Yeah. Colin, thank you so yeah. much for coming on Road Tindy TV it. Live. It's yeah. great to have you as our first guest. Yeah, I, take notes. I am the first one, so I set the bar. I'll let the viewers see who goes higher and lower. Oh, you know so. it's at the top. It's at the top. It's going to be hard to beat. And thank we get to go watch uh, Colin coming up. Race one of the Indy Pro 2000 Championship. Watch out for that number 27. 27. 27. Orange end fences. Orange end fences, slick locks racing machine. Yes. To commercials. Thank you. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin. And Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. 
the first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast? No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. Welcome back to Road to Indy TV Live. I am here with the man of the hour, Yuvan Sandramurthy, fresh off of his first win on the Road to Indy in USF 2000 this morning. Yuvan, let's just talk about it. I mean, again, you are the most, I would say the fan favorite of the Road to Indy. Everybody, and I'm talking the entire pit wall, got up and clapped for you as you won your first race. Your third full season on the Road to Indy. You're everyone's fan favorite. I got goosebumps when you won. Everyone was tearing up in the victory circle. How did it feel? What were those emotions? I mean, it, it felt amazing. It's been in the works for so long. I've been in this series. This, this is my third year in the series. And, um, you know, going into this year, knowing I'd be uh, the senior driver with Paps Racing, and it, it really was the year to step up. So uh, really focused on uh, putting that qualifying together. That's what we were working on this off season. Came up with the pole position, so we knew it was my race to lose. So. Just had to keep my head down, kept the lead uh, after the start of the race, and just no mistakes the rest of the race, and uh, came home with the win. What a breakout first race for you. I mean, I'll be honest. When we looked at the stacked USF 2000 grid, it's your third year here. Like you said, you're the senior driver at Pabst. You're leading them. Everyone didn't know where you were going to stack up. But for you to come out, grab the track record briefly yesterday in qualifying, qualify on pole, and then go out in a dominant drive, and not just a dominant drive, you experienced a yellow early. You had to do your first restart in the lead. I mean, these are all stuff you're just checking off boxes. For you to go out and get that first win, that is huge. It's going to do a lot for your confidence. How does that change your mindset for the entire year now? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously this year we're going for the championship, and uh, that's still the goal. And right now I'm leading the championship, so uh, really looking on pace for that. Uh, a bit of a setback with uh, qualifying. We didn't have great track position, so I'm starting 15th for the next race. But... Really hard to pass here, but never impossible. So just looking to move forward, gain as many positions as I can, and just keep chipping away at the championship. Hopefully uh, we can hold this lead going into St. Pete, and then just keep being consistent from there on. Perfect. Well, I can't wait to talk to you later in the year because obviously leading a championship, your first race, I've done that a few times. It is different. It changes your mindset, right? Now you're not just going for podiums and, and wins. You're like, ooh, points, right? Fifth, do I take fifth? Do I take sixth? So... Leading the championship, does that change your mindset right away? You're going into this race this afternoon. You're starting 15th. Are you going to move up? I mean, obviously, you know that the points pay out more in that top five-ish. So are you going to be aggressive and go after it, or are you going to sit back and just take what you can? I mean, it's going to have to play it by ear. I mean, it's obviously, I have to stay out of wrecks. That's the biggest thing. Um, but I do think moving forward is going to be pretty important. So I'm going to have to keep my head forward. Um, I think to also bring some points back for the PAPS team. 
uh, which is our main issue in qualifying was we got uh, we didn't have the first place uh, grid boxes, so we got really tr stuck in traffic. So just getting that um, lead of the team championship for Paps will be really advantageous for us um, to have the front of the the pit lane, especially in a track like St. Pete. You've been, you've touched on two great points that I want to bring up. Number one, for strategy on the road to Indy, what a lot of people don't realize, your pit box is on the grid, so when the teams go out to the pit, they get gridded up by their former championship. So last year's championship at the first race, they get gridded up by. So you even brought up a great point. He wasn't at the uh, the first end of the pit lane. Where did Paps finish in the championship? We were second. Second. So obviously there were some cars in front, and then all of a sudden you get sandwiched. You don't have that clear track when you leave pit lane to go out for that uh, very important one or two laps in qualifying. The second point you brought up, now that we've covered that, is Paps Racing. You made a veteran decision to stay with a team that you knew and stay with an engineer that you knew. Is uh, Burke Harrison still your engineer? Yeah. What a decision that is, and I have to commend you and your family on that decision. A lot of uh, We see a lot of drivers on the road to Indy. They do one year at Paps, they do one year at Exclusive or another team, and then they try and move on to Cape. They try and move on to another team that's maybe had more history winning championships. Paps has been elusive of that first big championship, that driver championship. I think it was a great decision for people, for you, to stay with who you knew. How did you go into that decision in the offseason? You tested with a lot of other teams. Yeah, I mean, I stand by my uh, idea that this, car, this team produces the best cars on the field. Um, by far the most consistent, by far the easiest to drive. So that's also why this offseason I spent some time testing with other teams, kind of get an idea of uh, what else there was out there. Because it's important to keep an open mind. You know, like I've been with this team for two years now. Uh, this is going to be my third. Um, so it's really important to kind of keep an open mind, understand it. But in the end, this team by far produces the best cars. And it, uh, it's been so long in the waiting for Augie to get his uh, driver championship again. So really hoping to bring it home this year. Well, and I think that's a testament to what Augie Pops is doing, having you return. It's like a family. We just got off with Colin Kaminsky. He's a returning driver as well. It's his third year with Pops Racing. So there's got to be something in the water over there at Pops that keeps those guys coming back. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a family environment there. It's not not too stressful, not too business, but it's also it's business when it needs to be. So we all are we always, always hang out with uh, teammates, with other crew, the whole crew hangs out in Wisconsin all the time. Now I live five minutes from the shop. So uh, it's, it's really cool to just have that environment, have that really friendly environment that really keeps confidence in the, in the drivers too. Well, and a fun fact, you were born in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, yep. which is, again, right by Pabst Farms in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, which is where the Pabst headquarters are. So it was almost meant to be. You were born in Oconomowoc, and you raced for a team from Oconomowoc. Try and say Oconomowoc ten times fast. I dare you. It is not easy. Yuvin, as you get into this year, what what are you what are you most excited for? Your third year returning, it's the same car. Are you still trying to learn? Are you still trying to push yourself? I mean, you're always learning. Uh, even the IndyCar guys are always learning every day. So it's important to keep it, uh, keep my eye out. Even that race, first time on a pole, first time on a start of a restart. So just improving every time. Where we are now, if we keep improving, we're going to stay here. So we're going to stay in the first place, which is the goal. So always keep in moving forward you know that's the that's always the goal especially in these uh junior series perfect now you're not just a racing driver but you're also a student wisconsin i see the badgers you're a sophomore in college I'm a freshman freshman in college how is balancing that act between racing and studies you know it's really tough especially this year everything's online so in some ways it makes it a little easier in some ways it makes it a little harder um having an in-person class just really helps kind of help memorize stuff help drive the drive the topics home um having the online this year makes it a lot easier because i can take classes from the track right which i have been doing but um still looking forward to next year to get back in person i'm gonna have to figure out with racing and everything try to manage everything but people have done it colin kaminsky is now a senior at pit so uh, For sure. it's possible and um i'm really looking forward to both of them because i am now also taking part in the formula sae program at wisconsin fantastic so, so that's really a cool experience for me to get in the shop more, actually be doing more work on the cars um, uh, and not just driving. So it really helps, like you said, learn a lot more too. Oh, that's brilliant. And then you talk about help around the racetrack. Not only your parents, I see them always at the racetrack. They're always supporting probably two of the nicest people you could come across. But for those of you who don't know, Peter Rossi is actually your manager, correct? Yeah. What a huge help. Peter Rossi being the father of Alexander Rossi, who's uh 
competing for IndyCar championships year in, year out. What is that dynamic like? You know, it's really cool because um, we can also, uh, Alex also helps out quite a bit. So um, just getting the information from an actual IndyCar driver is always really, really helpful. Um, uh, I talked to him just before this weekend, kind of gave me some help on how to calm down, how to stay collected, and ended up coming out with the win. So um, always really helpful to work. That family is amazing. They're the nicest family um, I've worked with. So it's really, really helpful. That is awesome. So when we talk about Peter and what he does for you, you I see lots of sponsors on the car. Let's talk about your business side of that. That's something that I don't know about you. I've raced against you or raced with you on the road team for three or four years. Talk about your business side. Yeah, so uh, mainly what we're going with is what we, uh, it's branded as ST Motorsports. That's our investment company. So the way that we're doing it is uh, if people would like to invest, they can uh, give some money, buy some shares of basically me. And uh, when I go pro, then they make a return on their investment and then they eventually make money in the end. So it, it's really two si it's a two-way investment. It helps both sides out. Well, and those of you at home that don't know, racing is probably one of the most expensive sports that you can come up with. And every race car driver on the road to Indy is always looking for more funding. More funding means more tires, more fuel, more cars, more time in the car. And that means we go faster, and that's how you move up. So very interesting that you're taking the investment model. That's something I didn't know. Very unique. Thank you. Barber Motorsports Park. Obviously, you got your first win and your first pole here. You're going into your second race. Do you love this place? Do you like this place? So that's the exact same thing I asked uh, the Paps Indy Pro engineer, Tony, right before I got here. Um, I said, do I have to love this place now? Um, I do. This facility is incredibly beautiful. Like, if you look at the infield here, especially on the inside of Turn 8, you wouldn't know it's a racetrack. It just looks like an absolutely tourist, scenic destination. So it's a beautiful facility. Not the biggest fan of turn eight nine. Got to be honest with you. Um, especially there in the race, I could see I always lose some speed to part, uh, Prescott Campbell there. He would always catch up. But it, it, it's an amazing facility. It's all confidence here. So I'm going to have to like this this track in the future. It's definitely going to be memorable for me. Well, and when I drove here, turn 12, 13 was the most treacherous. What's that like in a USF 2000 car? It, it feels pretty good. And it feels a lot, especially turn 13, like an oval car. Okay. So even though it's a right-hand corner, you can really feel the, the banking. You can feel the car set. And it's a really cool experience, especially when you carry speed into it. So I bet. Are you almost flat? Uh, at On a good track condition on sticker tires, the left is flat. Okay. The right is not because you have to set up. If you didn't have to set up, you would be fine. And one downshift still? Yeah. Up over the hill? Wow, that is fast. Probably, yeah. I would say, 120 miles an hour as you crest yeah. over completely blind. Close. You don't know where you're going. Do you have a reference over the hill? No, it's completely blind, as we can see from my qualifying performance. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty blind, and it, it's a really fun corner. Well, perfect. This is a great segue into taking you guys around a lap of Barber Motorsports Park. Coming up, you'll get to watch me uh, take you through what it's like to put a lap together here at Barber Motorsports Park. For the first round of the Road to Indy Championships, we are here at the Augusta National of Motorsports in North America, Barber Motorsports Park. This 2.38 mile, 17 turn road course is easily one of the toughest tracks that the road to Indy drivers are going to have to face in 2021. We're on the front stretch here, headed down into turn one, one of the toughest corners on the track as you dip through turn one, hitting the compression at about 120 miles per hour as you go up into turn two and get your run set into one of the only passing opportunities into turn five. As we head out of turn five, we're headed down into seven, eight, nine. I like to call it tic-tac-toe. As you miss the first curb, you slam the second curve over up and into the compression and down through nine. Turn nine sets your run back into 12 and 13. 12 and 13 are the toughest corners for any race car driver to nail. There is no room for mistake as you drop below 12, you don't see anything up over 13 and you just hope for the best. As you get through turn 14 and 15, you're almost done a lap here at Barbara Motorsports Park, but not quite. As you get through turn 17, it sets the run up onto this straightaway, which is one of the most important runs on the track. This track not only sets up great racing for the race car drivers, but it is amazing for the fans. You've got plenty of foliage around the track, lots of art that Mr. Barber's done, and Barber Motorsports Park is known for its fantastic Barber Motorsports Park Museum, which holds many vintage motorcycles and race cars. 
this is surely set to be one of the best race weekends of the road to Indy. Well, I'm pretty excited to have Indy Pro Race 1 coming up. This was easily one of the favorite uh, tracks that I visited on the calendar, as you can tell. It's one of the toughest that these drivers are going to face. And we've got a lot of storylines here today for Indy Pro Race 1 and Indy Pro Race 2 tomorrow. Uh, the first storyline, obviously, exclusive autosport, Braden Eves coming off of a massive crash last year at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When you come off a crash like that, you don't quite know where you're going to be. You don't know getting back in the car if you still have it. There's a lot of questions, a lot of doubts, not just for Braden, but for everybody watching. And he comes away with a track record, which uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, I had a 16-2 when I raced here in 2018 with Exclusive Autosport. He broke my track record yesterday, but it was good to see it fall. Uh, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. So not only does he come away with the track record, he also comes away with pole for race one. So he's going to be looking very good. But it wasn't just that he came away with pole. His teammate, Artem Petrov, in second. So those guys lock out the front row. It's the first time exclusive autosport. They've been on the road to Indy for four years. It's the first time they've ever locked out a front row. So I think that's the main story headed into race one. I can't, uh, I can't tell what the mid-pack's going to do. As we know, Barber Motorsports Park, very tough to pass around here. You're going to see a lot of action on the start. You know, the first uh, lap going into one, going into two going into five, and then maybe we're going to see a little action into 14, 15. You're going to have to make it happen on cold tires because of Indy Pro and the aerodynamics. As soon as you get behind somebody, there's just too much wash and there's too much, uh, too much going on. You won't be able to get by anybody. So it's probably going to be a pretty boring race towards the end, but the start is going to be exciting. Hopefully there's some restarts in there so we can see uh, some more action. But uh, let's see what they got. Let's kick it over to Rob Howden and uh, let's kick off 2021 and the Indy Pro 2000 Championship. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. TopCon, always one step ahead. Nobody. There's an Indy Lights car starting up right next to us too, so it's super loud. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. 
Airports? Let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, 
Goldie found the Coopers and they were just right. What a happy practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. Career victory uh, in the USF 2000 program this morning to kick things off at 8 in the morning, but now we're set to go here. Now, just about five minutes away from firing up the engines for the drivers here in the Indy Pro 2000 Championship presented by Cooper Tires. These drivers, the second rung of the road to Indy, and the champion at the end of this season will win a scholarship to move to Indy Lights, one step away from the NTT Indy Car Series, which just came on the racetrack to fire things up. Uh, great to see the NTT drivers, the IndyCar guys, back on the racetrack to get rolling. And so many of those drivers have worked their way through the road to Indy that all of us in the, in the road to Indy paddock always following IndyCar and, and proud of the achievements of the drivers that we have with us. So actually, standing by beside me right now is a driver who had a ton of success in Indy Lights. He'll be my driver analyst today for this event, uh, a former USF 2000 champion, former Indy Lights champion. And last year running for Aero uh, McLaren SP. Oliver Askew joining me in the booth. Oliver, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, of a lot of a me. lot of fun for you driving in these cars. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, would uh, would love to be in be in a seat this weekend. Yep. It's hard to watch that uh, the IndyCar uh, practice there. Um, without being out there myself, but uh, man, this is this must be the second best seat in the house. This right is here. pretty good, right? Yeah. We'll get we'll get back to Oliver in a bit, folks. Once we get racing, he'll give us some insight. Having, as I said, I spent three years barnstorming through uh, the road to Indy, just one year at each step before making the jump up to IndyCar. And I have no doubt that Oliver will have a fantastic career. Looking forward to following what he's able to do. A former 
for a Freedom 100 winner. Let's have a look at the grid right now as we are about four minutes away from firing the engines here for Indy Pro 2000. Let's have a look at the 17 cars. Tremendous field here in 2021 for Indy Pro. Starting in 17th position for J. Howard Driver Development, the rookie Wyatt Prakachik at the number five. He'll be by himself on row eight, or row nine rather. Row eight will have second generation driver, actually third generation driver, Flynn Lazier running for Legacy Autosport. Flynn's father, Buddy, obviously a Indy 500 winner, the number 20 for Lazier starting in 16th. Alongside him, there's been a lot of issues, some mechanical issues for James Rowe Jr., the Irish in the number three machine. We'll talk uh, more about James throughout the weekend. He's put together a really a tremendous program uh, to get himself on the grid this year. A couple of really strong partners with him, Trintech and Topcon. Awesome to have those companies supporting this really tremendously talented Irish driver. James going to start the turn three machine from the 15th position. Row number seven on the outside for Velocity Racing Development. Last year's F4 champion Hunter Yaney in the number 11. He'll start 14 alongside a former British F3 champion, Anam Ahmed, in the number 77 for RP Motorsports. This team coming back after winning the championship with Kyle Kirkwood a couple of years ago. Look for them to continue to get better and better uh, throughout this season. Moving to row number six now on the outside, Colin Kaminsky in the number 27 for Pabst Racing starting 12th. Inside of that row, Jack William Miller in the number 40 starting 11th. Row five, we'll see Enzo Fittipaldi and the other of the RP Motorsports uh, machines, the 74 of Fittipaldi, the rookie starting 10th. Inside of him for Abel Motorsports in the number 51 out of Kentucky, it's Jacob Abel. We'll go down to row number four on the outside, Kiffin Simpson, an unbelievably fast rookie driver coming up from junior karting. He has looked really good for Hunkos Racing, qualified here for race one in the Eighth position, he'll drive the number 21 machine for Hunkos. Alongside him, his young teammate Reese Gold out of Miami, Florida, a winner last year in USF 2000. Gold jumping up as a rookie this year. He'll pilot the number 55 starting P7. Road number three now on the outside. He's got the uh, Road to Indy scholarship colors on the car because he's the USF 2000 champion from last year from Denmark, Christian Rasmussen for J. Howard Driver Development. He'll start sixth here today. Tomorrow in race two, he'll be on the pole position. A great run in qualifying for the Dane. Rasmussen starting P6. Alongside him, a race winner in USF 2000, Cameron Shields from Toowoomba, Australia, running for D-Force Racing. Solid debut for the rookie uh, in the number seven, Shield starting P5. Moving now to row number two, third and fourth on the grid. Both drivers race winners last year in Indy Pro 2000 as the top four uh, filled with sophomore drivers. Manuel Suleiman out of Mexico in the 22 for Hunkos Racing, a 116.394. He'll start in the fourth position alongside Hunter McElroy from Paps Racing, who won the final race of the year, the finale at St. Petersburg last year, back with Paps Racing. McElroy in the number 18, ready to go here to try to get on the podium or potentially go for a race win. Moving out to the front row as the engines are firing on pit lane. They've got the call to fire up these power plants, 250 horsepower. And it's an all-exclusive Autosport front row. First time in the team's history. They've locked out the front row, and they did so here in Indy Pro to start the season. On the outside from St. Petersburg, Russia, with a 116.228. Artem Petrov for the number 42. He'll start on the outside of the front row, and the driver who won the USF 2000 Championship in 2019 was able to grab a victory at Mid-Ohio last year before a nasty accident at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Out of uh, New Albany, Ohio, it's Braden Eves in the number 91 exclusive auto sports machine. He'll start P1, a 116.154. So we are getting ready to fire these guys up. Eves and Petrov on row one. McElroy and Suleiman on row two. Shields, Rasmus in row three. Golden Simpson on row four. Abel and Fittipaldi, row five. Miller and Kaminsky, row six. Ahmed and Yaney on row seven. Rowe and Lazier, row eight. Prakacic by himself on row number nine. Now let's uh, go back to my driver analyst here, Oliver Askew. Oliver, you've run a number of races here at Barber Motorsports Park. Let's talk about the opening lap here. What's it like starting from pole, starting up front here, diving into turn number one? Because it's a downhill braking zone and climbing up the hill and through the Alabama roller coaster. Those first couple of corners, you got to have complete focus. Well, Rob, I think it's about 90% of the corners here that are just completely blind, right? Really? And um, it's all very high speed, so passing Passing comes at a premium, and uh, starting from pole here is definitely an advantage. Um, but there is there is some passing zones. You know, you have turn five. Um, you definitely want to get a good uh, run out of 
turn two and turn three, heading to turn five on the first lap. So uh, I think that's what's going through most of these drivers' minds, uh, you know, s starting behind pole there. Let's talk a little bit about tire management as well. We don't talk about that a lot in, a, in a, our sprint series. We don't run for an hour and a half. This is going to be a 30-minute race. Uh, people talking about burning up the left front. Obviously, a lot. We run clockwise here. A lot of uh, constant radius, long radius corners. How do you take care of that left front tire? Yeah, you know, you just, just try to keep, uh, keep the wheel angle out of it, okay. you know, and... Um, that's something that has to be in the back of your mind from lap one. Yeah. You know, because if you roast the tires off on the first couple laps, you're not going to get them back, right? And these are, um, we don't have any pit stops here. So um, these drivers are running those, those Cooper tires to the cords at the end of the race. So <laughs> Exactly that. And again, that kind of plays, I think, folks, at the start of the season, we often talk about the fact that the first number of uh, races of the year really play to the sophomores, the guys that are coming back for their second year in a program or even their third year, uh, as it was the case with Eubin Sunder Murthy getting the win earlier today. Uh, drivers lining up and getting set to go, folks, out of turn number 16. When they come out of 17, we'll go racing. Braden Eves and Artem Petrov on the front row. Say hello to those of you tuning into the Road to Indy TV app, USF, or their IndyPro2000.com or the Road to Indy.tv. We're ready to fire things up. Eves, Petrov, nice slow start. Coming to the line at turn number 17. Eves punching off. Green, green, green. And a good start for Eves. Push to the inside comes McElroy. He's going to be able to get by Suleiman. McElroy goes to P3. Braden Eves, though, with the lead. The exclusive auto sports cars run 1 2. First time through the Alabama roller coaster. Down the hill they come. Climbing back up a couple of stories to turn four. Big run down to turn number five. A little bit of an inside run there for. Eves as he does a little bit of a defensive move. Not crazy though, and that already a two driver breakaway. Oh, here comes Petrov to the outside. We are two by two coming down to turn eight. Petrov trying the outside of his teammate into turn number eight and nine for the first time. They'll climb the curbs, get the car rotated mid corner. Drivers around, one driver around, able to continue. That might be Jack William Miller and a driver further back with contact as well. A lot of dirt kicked up. That driver able to continue, but I think it might have been Jack William Miller in the red and white Miller Vinatieri Motorsports car that went around, keeping an eye on Aaron Likens, the official flagman of the Road to Indy, to see if he's going to grab for a, a yellow flag. So far, I think we're good. We will get a chance to have a look at the replay here of the incident happening over in turns number eight and nine. Drivers completing the opening lap. Here it is here. You can see the opening drivers coming through. Yeah, one of the drivers just getting, I wonder if that was contact or not, because the driver, in a, in a weird kind of turn, the way the car rotated, coming back onto the racetrack, and indeed, I believe that was Jack William Miller. Unsure who the next driver was who spun in the back. Oliver, like, does a car get really light coming through that corner when you jump up over the curb like that, or is Extremely that just... Extremely light. It does. And that's one of the corners that are... That's a corner here that's completely blind. So, yeah. you know, it looked, uh, looked to me like an accordion effect there. You know, you have drivers stacking up, and, uh, you know, it was a, a midfield incident. So uh, hopefully they can get that cleaned up and we can stay green here. Uh, yeah. We have a driver in pit lane looking for a front wing. Um, but there was some contact, you know, through the opening couple of corners there. Nobody around, but... Um, you know, there could be some, some wing damage out there or diffuser damage. We always try to kind of piece things together from what we can see. Kiffin Simpson coming in without a front wing. Jack Mooley Miller went around, so you think that could have been the contact, right? As, as Miller's out, uh, Enzo Fittipaldi out as well. Kiffin Simpson to pit lane to get a new wing there. The Hunkos racing team going to work on that very quickly. New wing going on, doing what they can to see if they can't keep him on the lead lap right now. But Braden Eves and Hunt, uh, rather, uh, Artem Petrov out to the early lead right now. So a little bit of RG bargy on the opening circuit. Simpson still in pit lane. He's rolling out. Here comes the field right in front, the 74 of Filippaldi. So the field will stream by. Let's see where he comes back in here as they come out of turn number one. You can see Kiffin Simpson just starting to work his way back out here, as is Enzo Filippaldi. It's a so great, uh, great close battle here for the lead. You know, you got the, the first six cars nose to tail. Make that seven. Make that oh, more than seven. <laughs> it's you know? eight probably almost. Lead group goes back to the number seven of Cameron Shields. Eight cars in that lead group. And the driver's going out here. One driver's slowing, coming out of turn number five. There's an issue there. I think that's the number 11, potentially, of Hunter Ganey. We'll have a look when they come back around. Jacob Abel, the fastest driver on lap number two, with a lap of 119.027. 
significantly quicker than the leader as Abel trying to work his way forward here. Better qualifying session for race two for Jacob Abel. They've really been working on that car. And interesting for Abel, uh, and we'll talk about it a little. Ooh, we got a good battle for third. That's the fight for third now. Manuel Suleiman trying to find a way back, but I think he's through. Suleiman able to get back by Hunter uh, McElroy. Still it's Suleiman and Gold. Still side by side here for the fight for third. That's Reese Gold on the inside. They got to be smart. McElroy to the inside. Look at this side by side racing on a turn number 17. Back up the front straightaway. Reese Gold battling it out. It's actually that's also the number one of Christian Rasmussen. So Hunter McElroy going backwards. Remember, he was able to get himself up into the third spot. McElroy goes back into P6. There's a lot of movement here, potential damage. That might be uh, Rasmussen going back a little bit. I'll tell you, a ton of action here right now. So up into the fourth spot now, I think, is Reese Gold, then Cameron Shields, then Hunter McElroy. The number five of Wyatt Prakachik into pit lane as well. Oliver, this is what we got to see for your entire three-year road to Indy career, the action from up in the booth. You were behind the wheel. It's a little bit different when you're... It's when a you're, lot more chill up here, Rob. <laughs> it's, you think it's more chill? Yeah, way more chill. I don't know about that. When you were out front winning races, you were chilling. It's me up here getting screaming, calling all this stuff. Yeah. Eves, Petrov, uh, Suleiman, Rasmussen, Gold. That was the top five last time by. A lot of action here. I was going to try to talk a little bit about uh, Jacob Abel. We'll do more of that later on because the action is kind of what we need to focus on here. You can see uh, Brayden Eves just starting to take control here. Like I said uh, before the race started, just so difficult to pass. And when that driver up front has clean air, you know, you're in complete control. He's, he's controlling the pace of yeah. this race. He's, he's taking care of his equipment. And Oliver, you know, one of the things, too, about this particular racetrack, and you know it from driving through the road to Indy, we talk about the left front and punching the left front. You were talking about... You know, not trying to trying to keep the wheel straight, not having to get a lot of input in the wheel, right? When you get behind a guy and you're close and you start getting that arrow wash, right, because you don't have the air flowing over the front wing, that's when you're on that wheel again. It really starts to punish the tire. It's hard to pass someone here, especially if you're up under the gearbox and you really start working that left front. Yeah, the driver in front just typically has to make a mistake yeah. or, or they need to roast that left front off and you gotta you got to um, try to make a move towards the end. Um, but, yeah, you, well, you know, when you're behind a car, there's there's some corners here that you have an option to kind of get some clean air on that front wing, like these long duration corners in turn 13, 14. Just peek out a bit. Yeah, and two, yeah. two and three as well. Um, you know, just techniques like that. Just try to get some more front, put some more weight on that left front tire. Eves out front now by eight tenths of a second. And here's a guy that was able to win a number of races in USF 2000 two years ago. Uh, also last year running in Indy Pro with the scholarship. Uh, had a, a really horrific wreck at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway when uh, an issue happened in the, the left rear car ended up going around and just uh, a freak the way that the car bit sideways. He was upside down and it put him on the sidelines. That was it. Uh, a neck injury for, for Braden. But uh, of course, young and able to uh, uh, to recover quickly was in a cart uh, later in the year after recovering, got a chance to get testing. And to be able to come back, if he's able to score this victory, it'll be big for Braden Eves. Already scoring the pole as exclusive Autosports runs 1-2. Uh, we'll see if Braden's able to put it down. You know, I think um, I think McElroy may have some damage to the, uh, the right front of his wing there. So it could be the reason why he's shuffled back a bit. He's, he's holding his own here in P6. Yeah, we had a really good shot of it there. Indeed, uh, our, uh, if our producers continue to try to pick up that black and white machine of Hunter McElroy, I think you're right. I think it looks like just the, maybe the right front yeah. uh, wing post uh, potentially damaged because you can see the, the wing hanging down. Now let's talk about that because we just said how tough it is here, how, how you beat the right front. You need that front wing to give you the turn in, all the, all the grip you get from that right fr uh, from, the, from the front wing. How tough is that going to be when he's losing the wing like that? It's just going to beat those front tires up even more. It might be okay right now, yeah. but I'll tell you what. In about 10 laps, if he, if he does have front wing damage, he's, uh, he's going to be uh, in for it. There are, I believe, there's, I think in the Indy Pro car now, is there a little bit of adjustment still in the car in terms of being able to change the bars? There is not. So the only adjust, uh, adjustment that you can make in these cars is brake bias. Brake bias, okay. It's, but once you get to Indy Lights, then you have the uh, the roll bars, okay. both front and rear, that you can adjust, which is extremely helpful. And the brake bias isn't going to help him on those. You, you can't, it's going to help you on turn, and that's about it, right? That's about it, yeah. 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 So Braden Eves leading by almost a full second right now. 
It's Petrov second, Manuel Suleiman third. All three of those drivers won races in Indy Pro 2000 last year. Top running rookie driver right now, Reese Gold in fourth. Cameron Shields, tremendous job. Single car team this year. Remember, Hunkos Racing, multi-time champions. Uh, they won with Renus VK. Uh, they won with, uh, as well, uh, last year with Stingray Rob. They've won a lot of championships, so these guys are good. Uh, Cameron Shields with D-Force Racing. There's no other data. When they go back after a session, it's just Cameron. Can't compare anything. So for him running P5 right now, just another indication of how great this young Australian is. Shields fifth. McElroy with the damage to the wing in sixth. Anama Med has worked his way up into seventh. Remember, he started uh, deeper in the field, started uh, back in 13th position. So Anam, the Englishman, up into the seventh in the RP Motorsport, number 77. James Rowe runs eighth. A great run for him. James, he started deep in the field as well, back uh, in the 15th spot. He's already up into eighth. Hunter Yaney, ninth. And Colin Kaminsky in 10th spot, as we said. An issue for Christian Rasmus. It looks like he is potentially still on the racetrack. Came down pit lane to make changes, but uh, a little bit of issues for a couple of drivers, and we've seen a couple of them in pit lane. Yeah, it looks like uh, Manuel Solomon here uh, starting to drop some uh, some quick laps, a couple of tenths quicker than the leaders. Um, but we'll see. Once he once he gets to the rear wing of P2, there it's gonna it's gonna be difficult. I was gonna say. So at the start of the race, obviously you're, you're on fresh tires or the fresher tires. As they start going away, what does the car feel like? It can be five or six laps into a race. Feels great. It still feels good. Feels pretty good. Um, obviously you have a, a full tank of fuel, yep. so you know the car is not gonna decelerate as good. It's not gonna be as quick on the straights, and it's gonna feel a little bit lazy. Um, but the, these Cooper tires, they tend to. Uh, they tend to hold their own through the race, you know, if you can take care of them and if you, if you have a good car under you. So um, the fuel burn usually cancels, depending on the track, usually cancels the uh, the tire wear. Yeah, okay. And you should be able to run, you know, qu quick laps at the end as yeah, well. Because simply because the car's lighter. Yeah. Watching lap times, as we always do, splits are important. But as uh, Oliver said, you can catch up to a driver here. Making the pass is much more difficult. You'll get that arrow wash. You'll have the issues. Right now, no real battles on the racetrack as the driver's now working their way up through one, two, and three once again. There's a good shot of the driver's cup. There's your top three drivers, but the big gap back to P4 right now, and then another gap back to Cameron Shields. Everybody kind of stacking up, not so much stacking up, but more closer behind Shields. We may have a battle here, as you said, though, for McElray. And I want, who is that? Is that, that's one of the, I believe one of the, oh, that's, no, that's Kiffin Simpson, a lap down. So Kiffin Simpson, who is That's at least driver yeah, who he's pitted. one lap down. He's yeah. the driver who pitted without the wing. He came out in the middle of the field, so it's not it's not a challenge for position, although he's he there. He can still race those guys, right? Exactly right. And listen, he's a young driver here. He's going to run five races this year, not the full season. So for Kiffin Simpson, getting in there, battling, showing what you've got to run with these guys is the key. Right now, eight laps into a scheduled 25-lap event. As we are rolling 50 minutes, the max time limit here. Cut drivers in Indy Pro 2000 doing a tremendous job. And Braden Eves out to where he needs to be right now. And that's holding that one second gap. We'll look at the lap times. Again, Manuel got down into the high 117s. Now it's Braden Eves going down to a 117.6. That's a quick lap. Yeah. Now, let me, let me ask you this. During a session... Some guys are catching up for you. Can you can you back off a half a second to cool the tires? Like, is that something you'll do as a leader? For sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure. He's in complete control, and then. Um, How much of an effect does that have? Let's say you take it easy for a couple of laps. Is that really going to help you out for the next five lap like brush, little push? Yeah. Typically. Okay. Um, I remember that's something I did here in, in USF 2000. Um, I had a great weekend here with Kate Motorsports back in 2017. Won both races. Um, and I knew that the driver behind me, as long as they didn't make any mistakes, there's no way they're going to get around. You know, it's not like uh, Indy Lights where they where they have push to pass That's within true. a second. Um, and so, yeah, he's just uh, he's just cruising yeah. out there on cruise control in P1. And again, this is this is a kid. Just uh, if you're a Road Indy follower, you remember what he was able to do. A great battle between Braden Eves and Hunter McElroy at USF 2000 two years ago, and and to be able to see. You know, what Braden did as a carter as well. Here's a guy that, that won major events like the Supercarts USA Pro Tour races, some big, big events in karting. So no stranger to leading races and winning races. So to have him out front like this as a champion already, you know he's going to be able to settle in and, and, and get the job done. And that's, I think, an interesting thing, uh, Oliver. And I, I talk to a lot of parents about this. They try to rush their kids through the, through the sport. Uh, you know, they want to jump them up. They want to be the youngest in this level. Or, or they've run a couple years of USF 2000. 
they haven't won a race yet, but they think, you know, Mike, he's ready to move up to Indy Pro 2000. One thing I always advocate is let your driver, let your son or daughter learn how to lead races, maybe lose a lead and go back and get it, because the mindset of running up front and racing for a win is much different than running fifth, sixth, or seventh. Very different, and, and hopefully they get to learn some of that in carts as well Agreed. before they even come yeah. close to entering the, uh, the road to Indy. So, um, you know, I entered quite late. Uh, I think I was... I think I was 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. You know, typically you see drivers enter USF 2000 around 15 or 16, or right? Or 14. So 14. <laughs> yeah. That's super young. Um, but, no, you, you spoke about, um, you know, Hunter McElray and Bra Braden Eves, two drivers that uh, did very well at the uh, USF 2000 shootout in uh, 2000. That's right. I think it was 18. Um, I was there, um, you know, helping uh, and judging, and then those are two drivers that did very well and, um um, have a bright future ahead of them. I agree. I think both drivers, one young American, one, uh, one American-born Australian slash New Zealand. We always laugh about uh, w how we're going to call Hunter McElroy. But again, as, as Oliver said, to be able to be out front, to get a chance to, to win here. And I actually use you a lot, Oliver, as an example, because a lot of, a lot of parents want to bring their kid into USF 2000 when he's 14 years of age. I think 14, 15 works if you're a top-level kart racer at that, that level. Otherwise, as you did, waited a little bit longer, and I think it worked perfectly for you because you were a mature guy at that point when you came racing, and you were able to get the job done. Yeah. Watching the battle further back again, Cameron Shields still running in that fifth position. As you see the drivers working their way through turn five, Charlotte's Web here at Barber Motorsports Park. Uh, I'll tell you, one thing we're pretty happy about is we expected potential rain here on Saturday. When we were coming into the weekend, everybody, I think, was looking at the forecast. When we got here on Thursday, I think it was 60% chance of rain. We're good right now, which is nice. 66 degrees here trackside. Yeah, it's cloud cover, but we're looking at sunny and 70 tomorrow. Perfect for the final two rounds of both Indy Pro 2000 and Indy Lights. And, of course, the main event with the NTT IndyCar Series. Two more races still to come here for the road to Indy. Right after this event for Indy Pro 2000, we'll go into the first of two Indy Lights races. 13 drivers set to go in the Indy Lights Grand Prix of Alabama, presented by Cooper Tires. And then later on this afternoon, green flag at 350 for the second of the two USF 2000 mains. They'll wrap up their uh, experience here at Barber. Uh, today and then look forward to the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Oliver, you're a, you're a Florida kid at, a, at, a, at a Jupiter. How important was it for you to do well at, at St. Petersburg? Well, that's that's where my uh, you know my whole family, my my whole entourage comes out, and uh, uh, you know friends and family from Jupiter um, come out to support me. So that's always a fun race and a track that I absolutely love. I remember though that when you first came into USF 2000, and you I was so proud of you because you had the mindset uh, coming in that first weekend, top five. Yeah. If I'm top five, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. How'd it go? I'm pretty humble, right? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you I'm going to go out there and win the thing. Yeah. Um, deep down, I knew that I had the you car and, uh, and and the speed to do it. And, um, you know, we put ourselves in a position to, to win the race. And yeah. I remember there was a, I was running second to Parker Thompson, uh, who had a lot of USF 2000 experience. Indeed. You know, I was expecting this guy to uh, put up a big fight. Uh, and, he, and he did throughout the championship. And... Um, you know, there was a, there was a re restart, and that 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 inside lane heading into turn one is always super dirty That's at St. Pete, and he slipped slipped a little bit wide, and I, and I got to the lead and, and never looked back there. So, I was just thinking to myself, it's it's um, it's awesome to see these guys make their you know first road to Indy start this weekend, and and first um, you know USF 2000, Indy Pro 2000, Indy Lights start. It's um, really cool to see. You remember what it was like, right? You know, you've done a lot of stuff, uh, whether it be everything you did in IndyCar last year, uh, what you're able to do in some sports car races that you've run so far. But you you think back to that first road to Indy start and how cool it was to be on the grid and eventually, uh, as you said, on top of the podium. It just it's, it's surreal. Just, it's a special time. It yeah, is it surreal. is. Yeah. And I remember um, I remember watching these the Indy cars and thinking, you know, that looks so far away, and That's the cars look massive compared yeah. to. The, uh, the USF, two, USF yeah. 2000 cars, yeah. and um, you know, it was only a couple of years later where I got to test one for the first time. Exactly. 
Uh, again, joining me here in the booth right now, a former USF 2000, former Indy Lights champion, Oliver Askew. And again, Oliver continuing to work on his career. We'll look forward to watching what he's able to do throughout the 2021 season and how his uh, career progresses uh, in the years beyond. Up front right now, it's a 1.6 second lead for Braden Eves as he's been able to pull away uh, from his teammate Artem Petrov. Artem with a similar gap on Manuel Suleiman, so the two exclusive Autosport cars. They were really focused in the spring training event. We were here a couple of weekends ago, and, and they were focused on you know, race simulation, long runs. They wanted to make sure they were going to have a really good race car. Let's actually jump into a quick battle. Hunter Yaney, we just saw them go by. Hunter Yaney is scrapping it out big time right now with Colin Kaminsky, I believe. Yeah, I think that's Kaminsky. So, yeah, Kaminsky in the 27 and Yaney in the number 11. That's the scrap for, for ninth and 10th. Yaney's a rookie. Kaminsky's, of course, been coming up and got super strong. They got a good battle right now. As you can see, Kaminsky trying around the outside there. This is some really good racing. I noticed Kaminsky had a tough start there. He was uh, he went by us in the grass. So I'm not, not sure what happened there on the front straightaway uh, as the green flag dropped, but um, definitely not where he wants to be at the moment. We'll keep an eye on the battle here that we see. Uh, James Rose worked his way up into eighth, and Ahmed does it up into seventh. We're past the halfway point now, 11 laps remaining into this event. It's a 1.6 second lead for Braden Eves. And some good battles still mid-pack. And it's about hounding a driver. And I think we, we talk a lot about the fact it is really hard to pass. Or turn five is the primary passing opportunity, Oliver. But to, to make a pass here, really it's more of a, a driver versus driver battle. You've got to make sure that if you're putting a pressure on a guy, you're doing it hardcore to push them into that mistake. That's going to be your best time, time to overtake. You want to be all over their mirrors, right? Yeah. You, want, you want to make sure that this guy is looking in his mirrors every corner to see where you're at. And that's, that's where you can, uh, you know, make them, make them uh, you know, drop a wheel or make, make a it. quick mistake. But, I mean, these, this top three here is uh, beginning to stretch out. So, Well, and, and shout out to, to Reese Gold. He's the rookie driver looking good now. Again, we're, we're, we're watching the fact that Kiffin Simpson, the 21, still staying right there, but he is that lap back. And I'm a med has got uh, a driver between he and uh, Hunter McElray. And, in fact, even with the damage on McElray, if you look at his last lap time, he did a, a 108 flat. He's about, uh, rather, he did a 108 flat, a 118 flat, exactly the same as Cameron Shields. So, McElray, can you drive around an issue like that? Is there something? We, we, he's probably burning the tires off, like you said, but with that front wing damage, what can you do to be able to make the car still perform? You definitely want to trail the brake in okay. um, further into the corner and a bit lighter, you know, um, just to keep some weight on that, on that front tire. And... Um, there's 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 only one adjustment you can make in the car, and that's brake bias. Yeah. So you, you can use a little bit more rear rear brake bias to kind of back the car into the corner. But um, you know, that's for the slower corners though, too, right? Right. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, there's not really much you can do. He's he's a bit handcuffed here at the moment. You got to yeah. wheel it, and he's pushing hard as he works his way up the straightaway. There's a shot again, folks, of the drivers coming out of turn number 17, back up the front straightaway here at Barber Motorsports Park, the Augusta National of Motorsports. The minute you pull into this racetrack. Uh, to come down the long winding road, you just know you're somewhere special. This place is always manicured perfectly. Uh, we always send a big thank you out to, to Mr. George Barber for putting this fantastic facility together, originally designed for motorcycles, but it has become the home of the Road to Indy and the NTT Indy Car Series as well. We love being here. Drivers like Oliver Askew have been able to be strong here. Actually, America's been pretty good here. Joseph Newgarden has won a couple of times here as well. That's for sure. I think sure. he had his first IndyCar ra race win here. I think you're right. I think you're right, and has won here a couple of times. Of course, just up the road in Nashville, Tennessee, it was where uh, Joseph calls home, another Indy Lights champion who has worked his way into the NTT IndyCar Series. Great to see fans here as well. Oh, a, fan, a fan favorite track, I believe. Yeah. So, um, well, 25,000 tickets, and they sold out. It's going to be a great day here on Sunday for sure. Eight laps remaining for Braden Eves. 2.1 seconds now the lead over his teammate Artem Petrov. We'll watch as they work their way by us here on start finish. But those of you at home watching the shot coming out of turn 17, 16 and 17. Elevation, the elevation change, I think you can kind of see them on, on camera, but Oliver, they are a lot bigger when you're in the race car. Even when you go oh, to yeah. the, the track walks, crazy. Yeah. You, you find these little references, right, on, on the side of the track, whether it's a curb or a mark on the road that, that you can use to, um, you know, make, make sure that you hit those blind yeah. apexes every single lap. 
And, that, um, and that's key, right? I, I, I talked about this yesterday a bit, about when you break it down to si simplicity for a driver just getting in. Let's say they're at the Lucas Oil School of Racing and they're just learning how to drive. There's your turn-in point, your apex, and your exit point. That you, you unwind the wheel at the apex to get to your exit point. But for a race car driver at your caliber, and even here in, in Indy Pro 2000, it's not just three points, right? It's lots of different points oh, yeah. you're trying to hit in a corner. We got a, a driver on pit lane here, the number three. I think oh, that's no. James Rowe. Yeah, James Rowe was having a tremendous run up into eighth position after starting deep in the field. Oh, I feel bad for, for, for James Rowe. Wow, he has shown so well coming forward as he did. Had some issues. Rowe in the Trintec Topcon Turn 3 Motorsport Machine. Team looks like they potentially could be pulling off the, cow, the rear cowl. Some kind of an issue with the tail of the car. Nonetheless, James Rowe once again showing what he's got. He'll press the reset button and come back tomorrow to try to get the result that he's uh, deserved. Eve's still up top by 2.5 seconds. Look at this group coming up the front straightaway. That's Hunter Yaney, Jacob Abel, and Flynn Lazier, I believe. As they work their way up through the corners here. We'll try to get them when they come back around. That's three drivers lined up pretty nicely. They'll come out of the corner. Actually, that's the number 40 of Jack William Miller. He's a lap down, but he's still in that fight. I said Flynn Lazier, but it's actually Jack William Miller in the number 40 battling with Jacob Abel. He's down a lap. Hunter Yaney in front of them running ninth. Jacob Abel in 10th. Jack William Miller back in 15th overall. Lap back, having come into pit lane. But he's... Uh, He's going at it, trying to get by Abel. Yeah, James Rowe uh, getting back rolling here on, on pit lane. It looked like a transmission issue that they were able to, uh, to fix there with the turn three motorsports guys. A, uh, a new resident to the Indianapolis area, is James it? Rowe is. James Rowe, that's right. Well, that's what happens. These guys come from wherever they are, Dublin, Ireland, uh, Copenhagen, Denmark for, for Christian Rasmussen. They end up finding an apartment somewhere in Carmel or whatever yeah. it may be. And, and uh, I just hope all those guys stay out of trouble. You know, race car drivers, and I don't like when they get together. I like to keep yeah. the, I like to keep them isolated because trouble can brew. Have you ever met an Irishman that's not funny the, uh, or trouble? And think I about never, I didn't say that. Think about Turn Three Motorsports. Peter Dempsey. Oh yeah. Again, like you, a former Freedom yeah, One Hundred winner. It's a great winner. combo. It's a great combo. Irish team. Uh, so many drivers, folks, that have come up through the ranks have had a chance to go over to England to race and uh, Formula Ford, and many of them have done it with Peter's dad, Cliff Dempsey, racing. Enom uh, putting some pressure here on, on the lap car. Yeah, it's Kippen Simpson, right? Yeah, and then also uh, also Hunter McElroy. Enom, uh, not, not surprising that he was able to uh, make his way up towards the front of the pack there over the first couple laps. A lot of open wheel experience in Europe from him. And I don't think he's showing what he's worth yet, right? No. He just, just came over yeah. here. He did some it's testing. Last minute deal, right? Same thing with RP Motorsport. They're going to get back to where they were two years ago, winning the championship with Kyle Kirk. But I think Enam's going to really dial things in. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. He's worked his way up to seventh position. And like you said, first he's got to get by Kiffin Simpson if he wants to battle for the position. Uh, and I'm sure he's on the radio saying, hey, this guy's a lap down. Why is he in front of me? Get him to, get him to let him me by because he wants to go at it with what we know is a, is a wounded Hunter McElroy, damage to the right front of that wing. And in fact, Kiffin Simpson able to get by. So Kiffin, the lap car, able to get by McElroy. And that's the battle we're watching right there, the white and green car of Kiffin Simpson, a lap down. He's, he's going to get by McElroy and check out. Here comes Anam Ahmed in the RP Motorsport number 77. He's going to make a move here in turn five. Big dive down the outside, trying to get the car to rotate. Oh, what a solid pass. Anam Ahmed around the outside, the Englishman going now to P6. And that was exactly the place to do it all over. We talked about the damage to the car. He would have to trail break. A hunter would have to trail break to get the car to rotate. But without that front wing downforce, you could see that Anam was able to run around the outside. That's exactly it. And... You know, outside outside moves around this track, they're, uh, you can definitely make you it happen. You can do it, right? You can definitely do it. So Talk so about that corner try on the outside because you're too wide in the corner. It kind of flattens out. Yeah. But it seems like there's a lot of run. Like there's a lot. You have to really run out the outside of the corner. Right, but it's easy for the guy on the inside to, to run you out off the track as well. <laughs> We've seen you know? that before. So you, you really need to present yourself there on the outside of the track. As and, he did. And, yeah, and, and get a nose on the guy on the inside so that they, that they uh, you know, control, control the corner a bit easier. 
I always say when you own the apex, you own the exit, right? And That's to be, right. for Anam to be able to be around the outside, it really did have a, a, almost a quarter of the car, if not more than a quarter of a car at the apex. Uh, Hunter was not able then to drive him out to the apex, as you had said. We've got laps winding down, four laps to go, so probably time to uh, put the focus a little more on the driver coming up front here. Braden Eves, 3.6 seconds as the leader right now. Picking up right where he left off. You know, great to see that he's, yeah. uh, he's back after his injury. That's what we're going to go with that for sure. But let's, let's track record yesterday uh, for qualifying, and he has broken the race lap record already as well. Parker Thompson held both of those records from back in 2018. A 118.4 was the race record. His fast time, a 117.2. So 1.4 seconds quicker. Now we've had a repave at the track here since then. So it makes a difference. There is a bit of grip, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but still, congratulations right now so far to Braden Ease. But as we said, you, never, you don't say anything right now. He's got laps to go, four to go, putting it down nicely. Artem Petrov second, exclusive Autosport P1 and P2. Hunkos Racing in third and fourth with Manuel Suleiman and Reese Gold. It's been a really strong run forward uh, for Anam Ahmed. He runs in the sixth spot, but he's about two and a half seconds behind Cameron Shields, who's running very strongly P5. McElroy trying to hold on here in seventh. Colin Kaminsky eighth, so the Paps Racing driver seventh and eighth now. Hunter Yaney in ninth and Jacob Abel tenth. 22 laps in the books, three laps remaining. And again, we will go right here, straight down to victory lane, from victory lane right into driver introductions. Uh, we're pretty close on time. I'm supposed to be doing victory lane, Titus victory lane, but I may have to end up going straight out. But we, if we go green to checker, we're going to be okay on time because, again, we get set to go with driver start your engines in the intro at 12.05. We're still a long way from that. So Indy Lights driver is going to start off their season, and, and Oliver... I know you're obviously a big fan of the Indy Lights program. It propelled you, obviously, to the championship and eventually into the IndyCar program. How excited are you to see 13 cars on the grid? Very excited. A healthy grid here, full yeah. of talent. Um, and we're, we're, A lot of drivers making their first start in the Indy Lights championship yeah. as well, which is which is always exciting. So, um, Drivers who haven't done a race stint yet. You know, there wasn't That's much it. testing yeah. in the winter. So um, a lot of learning here being done today. One thing, we've got time here because there's a couple laps left. Just a quick thought. Five second difference from USF 2000 to Indy Pro here. Five seconds from Indy Pro to Indy Lights. How much different is it going from the Indy Pro car to the Indy Lights car in terms of the physicality? You know, there's there's not much difference from USF to Indy Pro because, you know, it's the same chassis, yeah. bigger engine, more mm -hmm. downforce, right? But then you get to a bigger chassis, closer, much closer to the Indy car. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, you have that the the, the, the same uh, you know time lap time jump between yeah. the three levels, and um, that's what's really nice about the road to Indy right now is that there it's it's pretty easy to uh, get used to each car. I like that. You know, it, it took me a couple laps. Yeah. Okay. That easy. All right, folks. We are getting ready to wrap things up here now. Well, two laps remaining for Braden Eves out front. 4.1 seconds the lead for the driver from New Albany, Ohio. Connected with the Meyer Shank Racing Program, and Michael Shank actually got a chance to drive their virtual car in the IndyCar uh, iRacing Challenge earlier this year, and uh, looking to try to score a victory here to start off the 2021 season. Eves, Petrov, Suleiman, Golden Shield, the top five, white flag flying this time by. Again, Cambridge Global Payments, a new sponsor on the side there. Actually, not a new sponsor, a, a renewed sponsor uh, from last year. And this is a feel-good lap right here for Braden Eves. No, what what no does pressure. the last lap feel like when you're leading the race? Just chills. I, you know? I was going to say. Just chills. Are you listening to the car? Do you get worried about listening to the stuff happening in the car? No, not really. Right. You know, it's made it this far. <laughs> One more lap, please. Out of turn number five, you see him rolling back out to the apex and through to the exit. Braden Eves now working his way over to turn number eight and nine to cap off the first race of the Indy Pro 2000 Championship. Again, a 2019 USF 2000 champion, 2017 champion sitting beside me to my right here in the Cooper Tire Broadcast Center. Ask you, won the championship, Eves, and a fellow Carter as well, who did so well in, uh, in all the different programs in karting. Final lap, trying to get it done here now. Artem Petrov running in second. Could it be a one-two for exclusive autosport? Michael Duncalf down here on pit lane with the crew. Coming out of turn number 16 to 17. Folks, he was upside down to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway last Labor Day. He comes back with a victory at Barber Motorsports Park. Braden Eves 
winning the opening round of Indy Pro 2000. What a recovery from the injury, the horrific wreck at IMS, the, the time he put in wearing a neck brace for two months, getting back behind the wheel of a race car in a cart first in the off season, then testing again with exclusive autosport. This is retribution, folks. This is coming back. Uh, Oliver, he had a championship season going, but for him to have that issue, the disappointment, will I ever be able to race again? And he comes back to get a, to get a win can be no better feeling. No better feeling at all. Um, you know, coming back from an injury like that is, is difficult. What a horrific incident there. It was. Um, so really happy for him and, and Michael Duncalf. You can see him down there right down in front of us right now. And I can see Michael Duncalf has got the hand on the headset. So he's no doubt talking oh, yeah. to Braden on the radio. Folks, let's have a look at the finishing positions here today. What a tremendous drive as these guys get their way back around to the Tadis victory lane. Braden Eves with the win, the margin of victory, 4.27 seconds. Artem Petrov second. It's a 1-2 for exclusive autosports and a feel-good story for Braden Eves. Manuel Suleiman, he and Reese Gold from Hunkos Racing putting their exits to the field on notice as well. They're ready to battle, battle for a championship. Gold, the top rookie, right ahead of Cameron Shields and Anam Ahmed. Gold fourth, Shields fifth, Ahmed in the sixth spot from deep in the field. Tremendous run for the Englishman in the number 77 for RP Motorsport USA. Hunter McElroy holding on to seventh, even with the damaged wing. Colin Kaminsky, his teammate, eighth. Jacob Abel coming home ninth, Flume Lazier in tenth. Hunter Yaney ends up 11th, Kiffin Simpson in 12th, Enzo Fittipaldi 13th. Issues for Christian Rasmussen early put him down a lap, as did Wyatt Brikacek. We know that there was an issue, or Brikacek rather. We know that there was an issue with James Rowe. He only goes down a lap, ha having worked his way up to 8th. And Jack William Miller a couple laps back as well. There's your top 10. Eves, Petrov, Suleiman Gold, and Shields top 5. Ahmed, McElroy, Kaminsky, Abel, and Lazier to cap it off. And there he is, folks. You think about the emotion for this young man here right now. There's Michael Duncalf, his team owner. Michael and Kimberly Duncalf, the owners of Exclusive Autosport. Braden Eves will unbuckle, and you just think about the emotions uh, of him uh, being in a hospital bed last year and then coming back to where he is now to win his first race. This You can't undersell how big of a confidence boost this is for this young American to be able to do it. And look at this, the absolute jubilation of victory to start the season. Folks, we're going to head down to Tadis Victory Lane right now. The exclusive Autosport team will celebrate a 1-2. Rick Green, that was a lot of fun. Oliver, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, we'll ha have awesome. you up here again. That thank was you. awesome. Great insight. Rick Green, I'll head down there. Pretty good stuff. Great race. Great time. Let's, uh, we'll go be going down to Rob in just a moment. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. TopCon, always one step ahead.
Manuel, a race winner last year as well, coming to Juncos and going P3 to start the season. Solid effort for Manuel. Finishing in second spot, a tremendous start to the season as well for exclusive autosports from Russia, Artem Petrov. And folks, in the broadcast, we talked a lot about it, the injury and the accident at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There's no better way to come back from that. A difficult offseason, the recovery, getting back behind the wheel of a racing cart, then in with the team at Exclusive Autosport and testing. He comes back with a victory. This is Retribution, folks. The winner to start off the 2021 Indy Pro 2000 season from Exclusive Autosports, Braden Eves. The emotion on that final lap, you could see it. And of course, coming across the line, Braden Eves, a huge victory to start the season, all the off season testing, getting the job done and starting from pole, able to put those laps down. As you said, we had Oliver Askew with us in the booth talking about what it takes to be up front and putting the laps that you need in, managing the race, managing your tires. Braden was able to get the job done, as was Artem Petrov for a one-two for exclusive autosports. Top rookie as well, Reese Gold. Tremendous run to P4 as Hunkos Racing got third and fourth. This season is going to be tremendous in Indy Pro 2000. Veteran drivers, the sophomores, showing what they can do here as they are able to get to the podium. Folks, that's going to wrap things up here. We got all the shots. We'll get the champagne flying. And ladies and gentlemen, we're wrapping it up. Tremendous win for Braden Eves as the victor. Artem Petrov in second. Manuel Suleiman in third. And as you can see, we're getting ready. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. TopCon, always one step ahead. Hey, your Uncle Cooper here. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Goldie, my niece, your cousin, and Goldie didn't know which tires were right for her. The first ones were too much tire, and then the next ones were not enough tire. Anyway, long story short, Goldie found the Coopers, and they were just right. What a happy, practical ending. Go to sleep. 
I love you. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, what a story 2021 is starting off to be. I'm here with Braden Eves, race winner of race one. What a, what a story, man. Like, take me through it. The emotions of winning around here. Number one, you come away yesterday, come out, track record. Come away with a dominant win, but it's not just a win, it's a comeback. And we'll get rid of comeback because Braden Eves is back. Describe to me the feeling of that. Oh, it's, there's nothing to describe it. You know, obviously last year was just heartbreak and you know, last time, uh, last time I entered a race, I did not exit under my own volition, and it was in an ambulance. So, um, you know, to, to finish off with a win in my very next race, it's it's absolutely incredible. So I just, uh, you know, I'm feeling amazing right now. Now, Braden, I know you're a confident guy. I've raced against you before. You're uh, you're almost like the Iceman of the road to Indy. But but take me through it. Did you? Was there doubts? Was there a doubt period of if you were okay? I mean. I'll be honest, looking at spring training times, it wasn't like you were dominant off the bat. It took some time to get up to speed, but I know exclusive auto sport, they went through some changes this off season, but, but take me through your confidence levels coming into 2021. Yeah, you know, I was very confident and uh, you know, through spring training, we just ran our own program and we weren't too concerned about the, the lap times and uh, testing like a lot of people are. So, you know, we just ran our own program and improved a lot and we come here and hit the ground running immediately, really, really quick. Um, in testing here so you know I had the confidence I just knew that I had to go out and do my job the, the, the team gave me the car it's just this track is really really tough to extract all the lap time out of so you know that's why there's uh, the differences in uh, you know P1 to P5 P, P5 to P10 it's just you gotta you know take the car and, and get the max out of it so we were able to do that in quality and I knew going to the race I would you know I told my engineer I said there's absolutely no way I'm getting passed out there it's, it's so hard to pass and, uh, you know, I was super confident in the car, so I was just like, you know, as long as I hold on to the first lap, I'm set. Wow. Okay. And obviously watching the times, I mean, you were on cruise control for most of the race. I know you, you rattled off a 17-2 at the end there just for fun, <laughs> just to kind of put the fastest lap down. But was it just saving tires for most of the race? Yeah, you know, I tried, uh, tried to save a little bit of tire towards the end and trying to go after the fastest lap, uh, you know, when on real low fuel. But... Um, I don't think I ended up getting it. I think Rasmussen was back in, in the back and in, in clean air, so I think he might have got it. But, you know, it's all about the points here, so I can't be more happy about uh, taking the dub in the first race of the season. And I would say for all our viewers at home, the doubts are gone. Like I'd already said, Braden Eves is back. Goals for the year. I mean, obviously you're set out to win a championship. How does that change winning the first race of the season? Are you on cruise control or are you on attack mode? No, you can never really think about points until the very end of the season, you know, the last couple of races. It's all, uh, it's session by session. You got to do the best job you can. If you let up at all, it can, it can bite you. So, um, you know, I, I almost had that bite me in 2019. You know, we had some bad results towards the end of the season and I almost lost it, but we were able to hang on and, 
you know, I'm not going to make that mistake again. It's just push, push, push every single session I hit the track. So tomorrow is attack mode? Yeah, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's tough to pass, but it looked like Suleiman made, made a few passes there. So um, it gives me a little bit of hope starting fourth that maybe I can get onto the podium, maybe a second place or maybe even a win, you know, who knows. But, you know, it's going to be tough out there and we'll just have to see how it goes. Well, you look good on cold tires, so make it happen on that start. I'm sure you'll be good. Thank you, everybody watching Road to Indy TV Live. This is Braden Eves and Parker Thompson signing off. But don't go anywhere. We've got Indy Lights coming up. For our American viewers, you can head over to Peacock Premium TV. And for our international viewers, you can stay here on the Road to Indy TV app to bring you Indy Lights Race 1.